Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the Wood by Wright show. It's today we are here at the National MWTCA Tool Meet. And this is one of two, oops, the wrong way. This is one of two meets that they hold each year. Uh, this year it is in Springfield, Missouri. Um, the last one was in Peoria, Illinois, and the next one is going to be in Green Bay, Wisconsin. The one after that I think is Tennessee or Kentucky, somewhere in that area. Um, and these are it, basically the best place in the entire world to buy hand tools. They do have a bunch of local meets that are held all over the world, in, in fact. Um, and if you want to find out more about those, you can go to mwtca.org. Now, the website is very complicated to get around. You have to go to tool meets, and then you have to find the local or national, and then on another page, you can go down and actually see the list of where and when they are. Um, and you do have to be a member of the MWTCA to get invited to these meets, um, as well as then this isn't just a tool meet, this is a whole conference dedicated to collecting tools. So there's a lot of information and things like that that comes up, um, and so you have to you have to buy the conference pass. But then you get access to all of these tools. We're going to be going through and walking through all of these and showing what all is available here. If there are any uh, local meets near you, you can go to handtoolfinder.com. That's my website where I collect every known place to buy hand tools across the world. And I have a map actually showing all of them. So if there isn't one of these near you, you can go on there as well as there's a whole bunch of other collecting associations um, around the world where you can find one that might be near you. So let's actually dive into um, going through all of these. Now there are five rows uh, like this that we'll be going down to get across as well as there are several demonstrations down the middle we'll be looking at those and then on the far side they have some displays where you can learn some things about tools and some really fascinating stuff so let's actually turn around and do this turn the camera hey here we go okay so we are in the corner here and we'll be starting out down this way if you see anything you want more information on let me know and I'll go back and take a look at it and we're gonna start the show off by being directly on the live on the level <laughs> Hey, good afternoon, Tim. How's it going? Some carving and uh, it's all turning. Yeah, right. But here yeah. we got. Yeah, I've got some that aren't cut out. First grab box. So. You see a lot of boxes where it's like everything in this box, five dollars. Everything in the box, ten dollars. Yeah. Good old yeah, compass yeah. plane. Take that. Side rabbit. No, we're live on YouTube right now. Oh, cool. Are you I mean. <laughs> Leroy, thank oh, you. Let's see. Uh, ooh, I love these brass braces. I want to make one of these someday. There's a there's a company out there that makes the the kits where you can buy the brass pieces and and turn the rest of it. Be be fun to play with. Everything in the box, five dollars. I like actually getting the chance to come through and dig through these boxes. You never know what you're going to find. <laughs> Just got done moving and unpacking. That's a perfect time to go buy some more tools. <laughs> There's always some interesting things. One of the things I like coming here is I can ask, okay, what's up with that? Um, and so then there's someone who can come along and tell me. Aluminum body. Oh, okay, I know what this is. This is actually um, a, a master plane. So you would have the replacement soles and different irons you'd put in there. And that would create a master hollow that you could then take that hollow and make its matching round. Hello from Thailand. Good to see you on here. Some corner chisels back in here. Here's some beautiful old plow planes. Check those out. There's a uh, backing plane. Well, Birmingham turned into. We got. Uh, yeah, these are. He has a lot of KK planes and Ohio planes here for sale, and most of these are really reasonable prices uh, for the condition. I mean, they're all functional and uh, good collectors. He's actually doing a book on Ohio tools. So he has a, a lot of information on that. He has like 300 some Ohio planes that he's going through. California, good to have you. There's also a lot of old uh, books and information that you can dig through. Cutter sets, combination planes. Five dollars for saw sets. There's a bunch more saw sets. UK, Barcelona, good to have you. Some other books. If there's something you see you want me to take a look at, let me know. 
<laughs> right behind me. Who is it? <laughs> Let's see. Here's some cabinet scrapers. <laughs> Around this way. Oop, okay. Dowel plates or dowel jigs. The Netherlands. Good to have you on here. Two from the Netherlands. Hey. You guys need to get some tool sales like this in the Netherlands. There really aren't a lot. Spoke pointers or cone cutters, tenons. So these are all for a specific size. And then you have some that are adjustable, and these will create round tenons. I have a couple of videos on that. Okay, what is this? I do not know. Songs, uh, huh? I do not know what that is. Looks like some sort of a uh, saw set, I'm guessing, as you put the saw plate in here, and yeah, that's what it is. You hammer the uh, hammer it down, so you could actually hammer and anvil the the saw set. It's a slightly different one. I like that. Oh yeah, he's got a whole collection of them. So it's probably someone who is collecting saw sets. Oh, you like that uh, carved horn, the uh, uh, scrimshaw. It's actually a, a tooth. What's the plane on a stick? Where are we at? Uh, I think you're talking about this scraper right here. So they're, uh, they're, they're scrapers. Just makes them a little easier. You can have one hand up here and one hand pulling and you can scrape the uh, the surface. There's a uh, pencil sharpener. Some more saw sets. Whole oh, lots of saw sets. Do you know if there are tool sales in in California? Uh, actually, there's an entire tool collecting organization called PAST, P-A-S-T, in California. If you go to handtoolfinder.com, I have a link to the tool collecting group. And I do have several locations in California that I know of to buy hand tools. But I know they do at least one meeting in California each year. Uh, check out these. Sorry. Give you a reference of how big, the, how little these are. Those are pretty. Those are pretty. <laughs> these are always really, really busy. And so it's a lot of weaving around people and uh, getting into where you're from. <laughs> right. Creations. Here are some molding planes, some interesting items. A lot of interesting collector pieces. A miter shear. I did a video showing on how this works. The lever comes back and you have this massive blade and you can shear boards to uh, mitered angles. Some old step saws, other interesting tools. Once we actually go through all of them, I'm going to take you over here and show you some of these displays. because There's some really interesting stuff over there to learn. So let's come back around here. Not all the tables are open. Some of them will only be available tomorrow, Saturday. So if you're in the area, this will be going on tomorrow. You do have to be a member to join, and you do have to, uh, um, you have to pay the convention fee. I actually just bought a, uh, a small router plane from here. Now here, check this out. $125. Wow. Sergeant 61 in the box. Two cutters. There are quite a few router planes here. I know a lot of people are always looking for those. That's a good one. It's a bunch of good sergeants. What exactly is a step saw? Uh, it is a saw that allows you to cut into the, w the surface of the wood um, I should do a video on that here soon. It, it's kind of hard to explain over this. James, do you know if there's any like this in England? I have been told there is one show in England. Um, you'll have to look on my website. I have found a few places to buy tools, but I don't know if there, there isn't a show this big in England. Um, but I've been told there is one. I just haven't nailed it down. Uh, there is an English tool collecting association, but I don't know if they have a, a sale quite like this. This one's kind of cool, this miter saw back here. Each of these fences move individually. Just interesting shape. 
some really long auger bits, tool parts, pieces. You're fine. If you want some uh, wood thread cutters, tap and die. And these are actually for measuring um, board feet. So you can actually use this to tell how wide the board is, how thick the board is, and then it'll tell you this long, it has this many board feet. Quick calculators. So we got over here. Oh, here's a, uh, uh, here is a molding, a crown molding plane. Give an idea of how big this is. That's my hand. That is pretty. Tim? Hmm? James. James. Hi. James Wright. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. You want to be live? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're Say live. hi. Yeah, you can never know who you're going to run into. Yeah, this is excellent. <laughs> I didn't expect See your first time? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah, I saw your show on this last year. Yeah. And I go, that sounds like a good idea. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. A couple number ones. Yes. Man, that's pretty. One of these days I'll pick up a number one. Six ninety-five. There's some of the logo showing. It's actually not a bad price for a number one. That's that's reasonable. <laughs> See some bullnose planes. There's a lot of things in boxes. There's actually one table where he has uh, just new in box stuff. Some more wooden braces. Man, I want to make one of those sometime. Yeah, there are there are people who will travel all around the world to to come to these. Um, and I've actually met someone from Spain yesterday, and I've met people from the Philippines that come out to these. It's well worth the trip. This is a, a, a Stanley A6, um, an aluminum hand plane. These t these kids' toolkits are really cool. <laughs> Even with the old uh, paper goggles. More kids' toolkits. <laughs> okay, let's get back to the square. All kinds of chisels. Socket chisels, handles. Ooh, okay, here we go. From Argentina, good to have you. Whole stack of flooring from the factory. You never know what you're going to come across here. So here's some more screwdrivers. I actually bought a, a screwdriver yesterday. I can't find my main screwdriver for taking apart ca um, lever caps and such, and it just disappeared on me. So I bought another one yesterday. These ones are fun, so you can get more torque on them with the wings. Oh, this is a. Uh, a collection of uh, pattern planes. Uh, let me get down here. And so they all have a different radius across here. And you would have, this is the main pattern that you create the hollow with. And then you could flip it around and you could take the hollow you created and use that to then create the round. So these would be the, the pattern to start the, uh, the whole process. I know now why you sound familiar. <laughs> You want to be live? Oh, no. no. <laughs> I'm, bar I'm barely mobile. <laughs> Ooh, check it out. All the parts. These are the fun ones because there are just so many different shapes and types and screw lengths. It's always nice when you're, when you're trying to look for that part. There's a whole pile of them. Oh, this. If I need another set of auger bits, I would I would snag this. 125 bucks, which is a really good price for these. I mean, they're basically brand new condition. 
whole set of Irwins in the box. Absolutely perfect. Beautiful, beautiful. Another set of auger bits back here. What's the price on that machine chest? Um, let me see. I don't think he has a price. I, I think the mach machine chest here is just a display. He's selling all the things in it. I don't think he has a price on that one. Sorry. I feel like I'm in a museum. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh check it out. All of uh, the auger bits. I actually came through here and I found uh, two more pocket hole bits. So I got another pocket hole bit that I can uh, I can play with here. A whole bunch of chisels, handles, sockets that need handles, a couple Stanleys. Those are actually in really nice shape. Another sergeant. I really like sergeants. They're, I mean, for, for a user, I, I think I would prefer a sergeant over a Stanley most of the time because the sergeants tend to be cheaper. Stanleys are more collectible, but this sergeant's in fantastic shape. Whoa. A Type 6? Wow. Okay, I want to talk to someone and see why that one... Oh, $50. That's better. Oh, 1943. For some reason, I was thinking it was $9, uh, $1,943. $50. That's more like it. <laughs> I was getting very confused there for a moment. <laughs> uh, they actually do these these national events twice a year, and uh, they'll do them in different places. So this one's in Springfield. The next one's in Green Bay, Wisconsin. I think the next one after that's in Tennessee or Kentucky. Um, there's usually one in the Midwest and then one that's on the outside of the Midwest that's for the Nationals. The local meets are very similar to this, a little smaller, um, but they are far broader and all over the world. Plane parts. Yeah. And a lot of things, if you're looking for something, you find something similar to it, you ask the person, say, hey, do you have this? And they're like, oh, yeah, they pull a box out from underneath the table and they've got it. Not to mention, it's a great place to just learn. Lots of planes in the boxes. Here we got some plane parts over here. These are uh, plow plane cutters. Yeah, we did, uh, okay, and we've now finished one full table set all the way along, and we still have two, and then we have the demonstrations, and then we have three, four, and five tables over there. So we've got a lot more to go. <laughs> so if there's something you want to see, let me know. Check out all these in the box. Pretty. Oh, these are our replacement Stanley handles, and they made them aluminum. So if you ever come across a, a plane that has an aluminum handle on it, it's a replacement because someone broke the original one and they ordered up the aluminum handle. They last a little bit longer. But here's an entire box of six of them, uh, new from the store. That's kind of cool. So many of these. Wow, there's a nice one. Stanley number six, new in the box. Trammel points, anyone? Another replacement aluminum handle. Oh, check this out. Uh, what's the company on that one? Oh, Miller Falls. 67, router plane in the box, 125 bucks. Three cutters. There are a lot of router planes in here today. Oh, okay, here we go. The uh, the ten and a quarter. So this is the one that I. Oh, well, this isn't the same one, but this is one that I just remade the uh, the knob and tote for. So you can see how these will lean to the side, so you can get into a corner. Those are are hard to find and very pretty. That's a very rare point. Someone flattened that out. Yeah, I just had one with the the tote knob were missing, so I made a new set for that. What's that? Ten and a quarter. Yep. I need to put that out with it. When you really want to be boring, here's some spoke shaves for you. Hey, come on, a little bit of everything. Ranch. There you go. If you're looking for something to buy. Set of weights. Oh, check out this old brace. Isn't that pretty? 
She's handbook. I don't have any idea what these are worth. Now. I buy patented pliers. Any tap and dies? If you're talking about the uh, woodworking ones, yeah, actually, I just passed those about uh, seven, eight minutes ago. Sorry. There was uh, there are a couple of them. I think I've seen about four or five in here today. I'll show you some more. When I go back by them, I'll show you. A little whistle. So many fun things, just not enough time. Parts and pieces. All the little collectible items. Wrenches galore. Throw a wrench in the works. Right, this is the type of table I like to see. Let's see if I can get back over here. Yeah, put it, put him down below. And... Oh, okay. Hey, look, everyone's looking for a router. There you go. There's a router. <laughs> Some good old turning tools. Tongue and groove pair. I don't know of one in Utah. I know that there's the there is the uh, Rocky Mountain Tool Collectors Association, and they have several in Colorado, and I think they have one in Utah, but I could be wrong. If you look on uh, if you look on my website handtoolfinder.com, I have a map of the of the world with all known locations of tools to buy, um, as well as uh, tool meets. So definitely go on there and explore. And if there's something you see you want me to go back and take a look at, let me know. Yeah, I don't know of, off the top of my head, I don't know of any place to buy hand tools in Utah. I know Nevada and Arizona have a couple, but nothing quite like this. A lot of molding planes. Yeah. Birmingham, UK. I was just there in May. How big is the room? Can you pan around? Sure, I'll show you. So let's come up here. So here is the room. And so this is all we've done is this one table run all the way down along here. And now we're coming back along this table run and then we'll keep on going that way. So there's quite a bit. Uh, but if you don't have anything like this, I have a whole list of trusted online sellers on handtoolfinder.com and you can actually go on there and a lot of those online sellers are actually here today. They just have a much bigger stock back at their house. Oh, love these old turning saws. Um, yeah, the, the outside sale tends to be more of the, the less quality things, the bigger things, and the inside tends to be a lot more of the collecting items. That's a collection of hand saws to dig through. Oop, let's come on over here. Ah. These are always a little crowded and fun getting around them. Files. Everybody's looking for quality files. Some rifflers. Those are not easy to find. Yeah, I didn't bring my kids with me today. I usually bring them, uh, but for the fall meet, they're in school, so. Here's a whole bunch of uh, molding planes. So try and find that particular molding you're looking for. Back saws. Lots of back saws. Plow planes, plow cutters. There you go. Excuse me. 
doing all right? Oh, that is pretty. I love these old infills. I want to make an infill here soon. Was the tool finder uh, handtoolfinder.com? Handtoolfinder.com. There's a link to it down below in the description if you want to see that as well. And if you want a tool meet like this, contact MWTCA and set one up. Um, we're just looking for someone with, with boots on the ground who can set up the location. And MWTCA will actually do the, uh, the legwork to get people to come out to it. So if you want one like this, set one up. There was a, a guy last year who wanted one like this, and he set one up in uh, Houston, Texas. And he's like, there's nothing like that. So he called them up and said, hey, I want one in Houston, Texas. And so now there's a meet in Houston, Texas, because he's the guy who found a place for it to be and was the boot on the ground for the, the organization. Let's see, what's this one? Over here? $42. See, I just bought the, uh, the Sergeant version of this one with the box. I was looking for a little one like that. Um, there are, uh, I know there's at least one in upstate New York. There's quite a few in Pennsylvania. But look on the map I have on handtoolfinder.com. But yeah, if you want one in Utah, set it up, contact them and get it going. And uh, I'd even come out and do some advertisement and say, hey, I'm coming out to it and see how many people we can get to come out for it. That's what I did for Houston, Texas. I came out to Houston and did some advertisement to get theirs up and running. <laughs> Looking for irons? Do you have a, a toothing iron in there? No. Uh, I sold that to a guy last time. I thought that I had one. This, but this is a Type One iron, as a matter of Ooh. fact. Yeah, you wouldn't have believed this iron. I have this methodology of cleaning. I, I use a lime kratzer, a scraper, in other words. Uh -huh. Some people just bend over an old file, but I started pulling these out of 30 years ago out of old Minneapolis basements, right? When I go to into estate sales and I was finding these things. And I finally started using them, and they cut, they cut down on the wire wheeling, you know, by 20, by 80, 75, 80 percent at least. And the finish that you get out of them after you scrape them, because you're only going to the surface, you're not digging down in those pits. Yeah. You're not making those pits shine, right? And that is a huge difference in how this thing comes up. You wouldn't have believed how this blade looked before I started. <laughs> it doesn't look half as bad, no. now, does it? So, but I'm, you know, by the time you make it to Green Bay next year, I'm my my machinist shop buddy is is working on his part of it. But I'm going to have a little jeweler's old jeweler's cabinet and this clay case on top. I'm making, and all the plain parts are going to be well. They'll be spread out like this, but there are going to be a lot more plain parts within that cabinet. Oh, cool! You know, with little drawers and stuff. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Not me. Damn, damn cabinet weighs 25 pounds per <laughs> weight. It's unbelievable. You look at that cabinet and you swear and you pick it up. Oh my God. Yeah. So it's by the time I get a lot of metal in there. <laughs> I mean, I may need you to help me hoist it on the table, right? Now check it out. That is, that's, that's slick. <laughs> uh, there's another one coming. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. two of them. I, I, I do have two of them, but there are more edge tools coming out. This one here, though. Did I go over this with you yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm shutting up. Yeah, you're, fine. I kind of you're fine. You're fine. I, you know, a lot of guys don't get into that stuff that deeply and, and appreciate it, you know, so I keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you know what yeah, I've got to throw this slick joke in there on every video. <laughs> See that, Mr. 
Yes, it is. No, no, this is. I also have a, uh, a list of other groups and organizations on handtoolfinder.com as well if you're looking for something like that. Come on. There we go. There's a lot of people here, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to show this table. It's not stamped on bad, but there is. Now, these are uh, um, Victor and uh, Bailey planes. So, Bailey, the guy that you know, Stanley Bailey is known after, Stanley hired Victor and uh, took on his patents. Uh, Stanley hired Bailey, took on his patents, and so before that, uh, Bailey actually made his own planes with the Bailey plat patent, and it later became the the Stanley Bailey plane because he was using his patents. Oh, these are cool. Yeah, people complain about drilling a hole through the toe to hang them up. <laughs> Any dovetail saws? Yeah, we actually just passed a couple on the table before. Uh, I've probably seen three or four of them in here. Uh, this is a, this is a core box plane. It just has the cutter right in the tip, and with that 90 degree, you actually can create a perfectly rounded surface that you can make a box for fitting cores into. Yeah, definitely get in touch with Alan. I would love to have a reason to come out there. If you guys put together a meet, I'll come out and uh, advertise it and show it off. There, there needs to be more of these around the world. Anyone looking for rare plow planes? We're trying to. Oh, check out this level over here. And on a plow plane. Oh, okay. Look okay, at this beast. So, so you can see this. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, that moves just a little bit. I can hold that. You there you go. More tip? Okay. No, that's all I need just to okay. show how that works. Isn't that cool? That is beautiful. Yeah, you need to get one of these in Florida, too. I only know of one place in all of Florida to buy hand tools. It only happens once a year at the uh, um, at the wood uh, woodworking shows. That's what I was thinking. Let's set one up in Florida. I'd love, a, love to come down there. Stanley 45? Saw sets? How big a building do you need to host this? Most of the time, just like a basketball court for the local ones. For the first time groups, you can probably get away with something smaller. What? What's that? No, I'm live on a video right now. <laughs> I'm talking to myself, sorry. <laughs> Any number ones? Yeah, there's quite a few number ones here today. Actually, there was one guy who has a number one in a box. Um, I didn't even look at the price on that. I don't want to. <laughs> this is a cool grinder. Check that out. That is that's interesting. Yeah. Oh, here's some cool tools. Not that we haven't been looking at a bunch of cool tools. It's a couple number eights. Ooh, a bedrock 608. Pretty. Don't come across those very often. Those are in fantastic shape. Japaning is it's actually still really good. So okay, so let's figure out. 94. Oh, you don't see these very often. Check it out. Matching 98 and 99 with the fence still on them. That's nice. 250 bucks for the pair. That is that's actually a really good deal. Uh, yeah, next time I come to a table with books, I'll kind of show some of those off. A lot of them are just like the, the histories and information on a particular tool or type of tools. Uh, I keep wanting to get one of these. This is a dowel maker. So you, you cut a square rod to a particular size, and you line up the dowel with its cutter. And then when this turns, it's hollow all the way through so that the dowel can come out the back. And so you can run a continuous long dowel through it as opposed to a tenon cutter, which only cuts you know, a couple inches of it. 
<laughs> I'm always good at talking to myself. Did you buy anything? I bought quite a few things so far. Um, I've actually, uh, yesterday I bought um, a number five, um, I, well, I, I bought a number five that needs a new knob. Whoops, wrong button. You don't need to see that well. Um, I bought a number five that needs a new knob. I bought a five and a half that I really want to restore. It's in bad shape, but I thought it would make a great restoration video. Um, I bought a, a wooden toothing plane, which I've been wanting to show off for a while. Um, I bought a little router plane. I bought a screwdriver. I bought uh, two uh, pocket hole bits, which I've been looking for for a while. So yeah, I've been having fun. So we are uh, actually two of the five table rolls done. And I thought I'd show you some of this demonstration work. Uh, these are, are here from the, uh, um, the, what do they call it? The, the Springfield Leather, Springfield Leather, yeah, Springfield Leather Company. There we go. But check out this guitar case, just completely covered. Isn't that gorgeous? Doing some beautiful work. Yeah, they're doing some demonstration work and playing around with tags. Loving the work. <laughs> yeah, we've got uh, spoon carving and uh, um, gypsy flowers. Here, I'll show you what these look like. He's doing spoon carving. But they have these gypsy flowers. Those are kind of cool. Quick and easy little projects. Some basket weaving. Uh, let me show you some of the spoons that he's been, spoons and spatulas and such that he's been working on. I love these antler handles. Oops, sorry, coming down. There you go. Did you end up buying a bull ads? I have not bought a bull ads yet. It is high on my list, but oh well. Oh, here, let me show you this. So there's making the, the gypsy flowers. I do want to try this sometime. We make a good video. Just peeling it back each one at a time. That's beautiful. All right, let's come on over here. Oh, this one's interesting. He's doing a tin work. Um, so working with, uh, you know, tin, brass, copper, sheet, and folding and making all sorts of things so candle reflectors mugs it's all this work and actually showing how it's done on here so this is fascinating to come over here and actually see how do you make a round tin on one of these some really interesting old tools and seeing how original reproduction okay let's get back to this <laughs> hey there's lots and lots more tools over here so we let me show you what we've done we've done the two rows of tables over here we've done the demonstrations here and now we have three more rows of tables over here and then I've got all of the displays over here that have some really fascinating things like this um, antique leather working tools and some information about that but I really want to show you this table. Uh, okay, so let's get back into here. So if there's something you want to see, let me know, and I'll try and take a look back at it. I'm trying to keep an eye on the comments. Um, I didn't ask her what wood that was made of. I might have to go back and ask her that. Okay. Sorry. Too many people. Anybody want a knife? Hatchets. I almost bought a Bull Ads earlier that has a, uh, a, a hatchet built onto the back. Old soldering iron. Oh, check out this router plane. That's cool. It's like someone just made that in their garage. Cast the bed. <laughs> Some cabinet scrapers. Bunch of number 12s. A whole bunch of Stanleys. It's 
Sorry, trying to weave around people. So I can't always get the angle I'm looking for. Some more augers. Brace yourself for this. We're going to get to the boring part. <laughs> I, I never get tired of that one. I got to use that one all the time. <laughs> the Stanley 11 and a half. Number two. Let's see what he's asking for that. 200 bucks. That's not bad. Really nice condition. Hundred and fifty. Oh, it's missing the knob. The handle's been worked on, so it's hundred and fifty instead. Number six. Come on this way. Another nice set of augers. That's a really nice set. What's he asking on that one? Sixty-five bucks. Oh wow. That is a great price for a full set of augers. Some corner chisels. Old stones. Stanley 55. Stanley 55. Stanley 55. Stanley 45. Stanley 45. Stanley 45. <laughs> Oh, here's an old set of Stanleys. Oh, this one's kind of cool. The, uh, the chisel plane. So you'd have that you could clamp onto your chisel. Full set of auger bits, 45 bucks. Or set of 13, not quite a full set. Oh, I showed this one yesterday. Inclinometer. So you could actually focus in and see a very, very precise amount of angle at a really, really, really accurate level. <laughs> For the machinists in the group. Okay, okay, here we got some wrenches. <laughs> Any Luther tools? There are a few, not that much. Um, there's one guy in particular in the group who collects and sells a lot of Luther tools. Um, but I don't think he's here today. Here's a fun one, a, a, an aluminum hammer, hammer. So you're not bashing up your steel, you're bashing up your hammer. So many interesting things, and I love coming here because you can ask questions about things. Chisels on the auction table uh, with a tag on it with no name. Uh oh. So anything without a name goes to the guy that runs the auction. <laughs> um, Japanese tools. There aren't. Uh, th there are a few people who sell Japanese tools. They're just not as common. Um, old Japanese tools are, are, are really not that common. So I'm letting some people who want to look at books look over some of these books. Some old copies of the grist mill, which if you become a member, you get the copy of the grist mill. A lot of good information in that, as well as you get remakes of some of the old uh, uh, books and catalogs. I thought of you when I saw that. Bunch of saws. Some more books for sale. Handbook of Water Control. Well, that's an interesting one. And it corrected itself. And even German. Yeah, there's uh, there are a lot of German planes. Um, and there's actually one of the display booths that has some really cool um, European and some German in there. It's coming around this way. Good old compass planes. Or just one compass plane. Some more Stanleys. Lots of Stanleys. Oh, Liberty Bell Stanley. Quite as big as they are now. 
The Victor, number 20. Now that's a nice compass plane. That is a really nice compass plane. That's one. That one's nice. <laughs> Scrub plane. A lot in the box. Some old stones. A new one, an old Singer sewing machine. Let's see what we got around the corner over here. There's a tool cabinet. <laughs> I like good dad jokes. If you don't believe my story is true, just ask the blind man. He saw it too. Good old transitionals. Yeah, one of the interesting things about transitionals, um, Stanley was able to make them a little cheaper because the, the metal parts are all exactly the same uh, from the, the, you know, the six, seven, eight size. And so they were able to make the same parts between them, but just a longer bed. Miter saw. And over here, got some more plain parts. Yeah, check this out. Box of machinist clamps for 18 bucks. Whole pile of parts. Some more parts. Oh, here's a cool pencil sharpener. There are a lot of people who collect interesting pencil sharpeners. Like this one, you put the blade in there, when you turn the handle, it actually will rotate the, the pencil in place, and this blade will spin around and slice it off every time it rotates it. Most unusual pair of scissors here. Yeah, Indian. These scissors are sharp on both edges of each blade. Oh my gosh. Okay. When this blade got dull. So many interesting things. I love these tables because you can just go through here and pick out like, what is that? Uh, what is that? What is that? <laughs> just so many things to learn here. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta go around. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Now, right here. Yeah, this is what it would have for uh, buggy whips. You can actually hang it up, and they would display all the whips hanging around there. So, if you had a store with a bunch of old buggy whips, there were two of those outside yesterday. Some old antique leather tools. Here's an apple slicer. Oh, that's a different one. Oops, sorry. So this one, the apple will rotate and move around, and the blade stays in put, stays placed. There are lots of different apple slicers as well as pencil sharpeners. Some bells, rope winder. Another rope winder. Just, just so many weird things that you're like, I don't know what that is, but that's kind of cool. And there are all sorts of other things here for sale. You never know what you're going to come across. Let's see what we got over here. So what's your best price Levels. Sorry, reading through the comments, I go quiet when I'm trying to read through those. I'm trying to maintain the comments all at the same time. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Lots of rules. Ooh, Stanley 2 in the box. Nice box. You don't come across those very often. Come on, focus. There you go. I'm trying to do a one-man show, audio, video, comments, and everything, well live, well walking around and moving around people. This is always really interesting to do. I do want to make one of these. Interesting thing about these, see the, the, the connector bit on these are all different because you would have someone make their own brace, and then they make their own bit holders, and then you would get your local blacksmith to make your bit, and you would put the, the piece together. So you would have a whole set of your own bits that only work with your brace. <laughs> Stair saws? Yeah. Having fun today? Archimedes drill? Bow drill? Two dollars each. One dollar each. Yeah, the interesting things about these, they're tool collectors, so it's not like it has to be hand tools. You'll feel, see a lot of things that are newish, some things that are older. Another aluminum A5. Some uh, Stanley 150 year anniversary tools. Why is it that people don't use the 150 year anniversary tools? I don't know. Ooh. Here's a. Uh, 605 and a half. Yeah, it is. Corrugated 605 and a half. 605 and a half C. <laughs> That's cool. Ooh, there you go. The uh, 40 and a half. So it's the it's the scrub plane, but it's the wider version of the scrub plane. And between the two, that one's my favorite. But they're much, much harder to come by, and therefore much, much more expensive. Come on, focus. There we go. Let's see what we got. Little of this, little of that. Yeah, the five and a half is is a really nice size plane. Here are some uh, uh, scratch stocks. Spoke shaves? Probably work that. Oh, check out that spoke shave. That's more of a draw knife than a spoke shave, but holy cow, that's been forged like mad. <laughs> Someone needed a tool and they needed it fast. <laughs> oh, here you go. Atkins saw. When you look at the logo upside down, it reminds me of my logo. It's one of my favorite saws. So what exactly is the purpose of the nib? <laughs> I love to start arguments with those. It's way back at the start. Yeah. I don't know. If you catch up, then it be an hour. Start the cut. Uh, that's why a lot of nibs are broken off with people trying to start the cut with a nib. That's, uh, yeah, not what they were intended to do. Your <laughs> flow. I was thinking 25. I was looking to see if there's a pocket hole bit in there. Not seeing one. Yeah, I nibbed. <laughs> oh, check out all these down here. Leg vices. Big old drill bits. Now here's that bit from yesterday we saw outside. It's it's long, 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 long bit. <laughs> Molding plane. Oh, check out this big beast of it. I mean, to give you an idea, that's my hand. So that's going to be like, what, 24-inch um, hand screw? A whole lot of molding planes here. <laughs> I like mixing nibs and dad jokes. Good. Find anything else? Good. Yeah. 
Anyone want a record? Yeah. That record made a record. I don't, I don't see anything, but it's... Cloud Plains? Sorry. Bedrock, 605 and a half. Hey, this one's interesting. So the handle will fold up, go in the sheet so you can take it out of the woods. Wrench. Right up your alley. I'll make you Shears. Sorry, trying to catch up. There we go. So we got another uh, brace. Oh, that one's pretty. Man, that was pretty. I mean, the wood is just more or less there for decoration. Can you see many people buying today? Yeah, there's there's uh, about two or three hundred people here today. It's a little quiet at the moment. I uh, I don't do the video right off the bat. I let people go through and let the lines die down a little bit so I can walk around a bit more. Howdy from Germany. Really nice collection of knives here today. Uh, have you ever seen one of these? Double-headed hammer for when you want to get rid of duplex nails. You know how duplex nails have two heads, therefore you, you, you need two claws, right? That's what it's for, right? <laughs> Number 78 in the box. Clock and watch, uh, watch pliers. Jeweler's lathes. Another machinist box full of tools. Most of the time the machinist box is not for sale, it's just a way of actually carrying the tools and displaying them. Why do you always say no? Oh, here me show you the axe that was, was it? Where was it? Oh yeah, here we are, back here. The axes that have the blade in front of it, that way you can carry it in your pocket or your pack and not be slicing your pack apart. Because the head would be razor, razor sharp. But you put that into it, uh, it protects the head. But then you can take that and fold it back into the handle and then use it like a hatchet. Oops, sorry. I'm walking into people's ways. You're selling his collection. So we've got all of the uh, the advertisement tape measures and plum bobs. It's actually rather impressive how many people collect plum bobs. And all of these collectible tape measures. All right, what do we got over here? We got a few fun tables coming up right around here in the corner. I've been looking forward to showing off. Um, chronometer. What is a chronometer? 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 Looks like a scale. Pounds per bushel. Huh. Fascinating. If someone was here, I would uh, go and ask them. I'll have to come back and see if I can find more information on those. So what I love is there's just so much crazy information. Someone made their own box to store all the parts for their 78. For measuring grain. Oh, yeah. I'll bet I beat you to it. That's why I'm sitting here facing Some of these, these are fun. It's just a screwdriver. I'm trying to stay where I'm at break even. When you need that. Sell a little more for you. And I ain't got that much here. I'm a little. I got a little more than that. Oh, here's another. But. Dial maker. Not all asking. That much, but 275. I get, I get, I get it, get one it. cutter. You know, anybody that did was a damn fool. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> that's what that's what I said when I started farming. I didn't find Missing a few it. parts. Stanley 50. 
Yeah. I'm handling the tools kind of like when we were Stanley young. 55? My wife and I, I've fixed furniture since I was a kid. And I bought this huh, tool interesting. to pay for anything we ever kept. And I'm doing the same way with the tool. Bought no matter how many times I come here, I still find new things to to I learn and figure out a uh, side rabbit plane, but this one still has the fence. And it's rare to find I, them with the fence I still there. I sold or 96 pretty well, but they were good too. Set of cutters for 55? And I still have a few. I've had, I've had three guns. Yeah, if anyone's looking for uh, cutters for the 45-55, there you go. That's what you do when you get tired of digging through the shoebox for a <laughs> There was a guy at the peach meet who had a, a, an 18 gallon tote completely full. It's probably around 50, 60 pounds of, of cutters. That was just the tote full. <laughs> well, it was just, but the shoeboxes were not because there, there's a lot of density to that weight. Oh, yeah. And, and, and I'm always looking for a, a number of this or that. Well, I got tired of doing that. So the sorter was cheap, put some labels on it. And border collie and a sun conure. Some more leather working tools. The dog is almost easier. Oh, check out these saws. They're, they're squares, so the back is perfectly flat and smooth, and it's square to the front edge. There's also a level on here, and then this, this is a scratch-all that you can pull out, and so you can actually use it to mark your work, so it's all in one tool to handle it all. Kind of cool, but as with any all-in-one tool, it's, it's great for doing a lot of things together, but not really great for any one tool, one particular item. But always fun when you get to see them. Oh, that's pretty. What's he asking on that one? 65. I might have to come back and take a look at that one. There's one near the German border in the Netherlands. Can you send me information on that? Um, send it to James Wright at woodbywright.com. I would love to find out more information about that because I don't know about any in that area. I would love to be able to uh, to tell people about that. Please, please send me that information. Some more brace, a brass brace. Thanks, man. That means a lot. That's this one. What's that? What is the wood on that? It isn't one. It isn't. Still antique. Buffalo horn. Water buffalo horn. Ah, cool. That's where they had plastic. Buffalo horn. Yeah, I wish Jim time. was here. He never heard the right term. But he can huh. tell you how many tons they imported into London wow. in the 18, whatever it was. Buffalo horn. Yeah, the 1850s, because they, they used them for umbrella handles and about everything. Huh. That's fascinating. Thank you. I love being able to learn new things like that. Never, never heard of that in use. Yeah, check this out. We got the... Uh, different angles on this so you can use it like a square. The back on this is perfectly straight so you can have 90 degrees, 45 degrees, and any inclination between them. Yeah, I'll definitely have to add that to my website. And if any of you go to handtoolfinder.com and you know of some place to buy tools that is not on that website or map, please, please let me know. I want to add them to the map and get a, as good a, an information as we can so that people can help others find where all the tools are at. Those are pretty. Check out the carving on this. Back when it was cheaper to carve than it was to paint. Paint was expensive. Paying someone to carve something was cheap. Chisels, another lathe. This is an interesting uh, corner brace with the, uh, the union joints here. So you can still turn it at, uh, in, the, in the flow. You're just turning it at a parallel location from where it's actually drilling. Couple more little planes, bits and pieces, doodabs. 
Ooh, a magic lantern. So you can sh show magic pictures with the, uh, the lantern. Okay. We got this whole row to do on this side of the table, and then we're going to come back and do both sides of that one, and then we'll go do the displays on the far side. This is one of the, the, the bigger tool shows that I've gone to so far. So here we go, more molding planes. Bits, planes, plow planes. This is actually a, a tongue and groove set. So one of them cuts the tongue and one cuts the groove and they match each other. Flywheels. The uh, axe display. <laughs> Two thing plane. Is this a compass plane? Yep, compass plane. This one, you actually uh, adjust. Oops, sorry, wrong way. You adjust the toe down to change the curvature that you're cutting. So it's an adjustable compass plane, but you can do that by rotating this and setting it at different heights to do different different depths or different curvatures you're looking for. Plum bobs. Got a bunghole drill. Chisels, 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 chisels. If I said chisels enough, okay, I'll stop. <laughs> a lot of really good prices on these chisels, actually. 81. Okay, what is that axe for? Parade. What? It doesn't cut Ah. Huh. Wow, look at those thin little hand screws. Well, I'm thinking about that the one he's talking about. I've got handles. The machinist box. Right here. Braces. Here's another corner drill. Oh. Uh, the axe is, is made of uh, uh, sheet metal. It's for a parade, so the whole thing only weighs about eight pounds. But you could see it from a distance. Now you you uh, laugh about uh, decapitating axes. There was actually a display um, at the last national meet where they were showing a collection of um, executioner's axes. Well, this one's kind of interesting, so it's a normal brace, but then it also has this addition you can put on, so you can turn it into an egg beater drill all in one. So we want to do it one way or the other. Oh, here's a beautiful egg beater drill. <laughs> Look at that thing. More grab boxes. Stanley number seven. Six. Some more measuring tools, machinist measuring tools. Oops. Another 55. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Some more books. I saw your stream with the. Yeah. Some more books for sale. There are a lot of interesting books on a particular topic, and a lot of these are um, catalogs. So you'd have like the, the King Cutter catalog, Stanley catalog, and some of these are actually, um, they're actually, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, studies on a particular type of tool or a particular thing like American Levels and their makers. So an entire book about levels made in America. Now look at this one. Someone broke the toe off, and so they riveted on a panel on this side, and they riveted on a panel on this side. Let's see, what's he asking on that one? 
Nope. I'm always looking for a good one to restore to make a good video. Draw knives. I want to get one of these that fold up so the draw knife is actually in the handle here and you can flip these out. I can't do it one hand except to put the lock off. That way you can carry it in your pocket without slicing yourself. Another machine's toolbox. What brand on that ball peen hammer? Uh, let's see, here we are. Let's see if I can read that. JF. R.L. Sindel, Missouri. Sindela, Missouri. I don't know if you guys can read that. There we go. Stanley 7 8 with missing fence. Oh, I'm so sad because I was. I was looking forward to coming out here to uh, uh, Matthew, uh, Matt's setup, and so we missed each other yesterday. He came, um, he came out after I finished the tool sale, and so I had to go off do something else, and he came out to the tool sale when I was gone, and he's gone today, well, I'm going to be gone tomorrow, so I'm coming all the way down here, and I've been wanting to meet him, but uh, we just couldn't make it out. Oh, here's some interesting displays. So these were uh, advertising signs. Big old Coca-Cola. Yeah, let's come on back over here. There's this table to go through, and then we can go do the displays in the end here. Some really interesting things down on this one. Yeah, check out this egg beater drill here. Skates. Good old compass plane. Here's a, uh, a bicycle wheel, and the top of this is ready to be jointed together. So you can see the, the feathering here matching the feathering on this side. So you can actually join them together. <laughs> Oops, sorry. What is the treadle? I'll be getting back to the treadle lathe here in a minute. Hey, John. Cool, you gotta go take a look at it. Oh, check out that. So many pretty tools. Set of weights. Here's some good old braces. Check out these old braces. Such interesting designs. Molding planes. Uh -huh, here's a an all-in-one, so you can grab your uh, your nuts and be able to brace them on and off. Plaster float. <laughs> Infill shoulder planes. Now look at this old square in here. <laughs> Here's a interesting old plane. Single iron plane. Huh. Stanley 608 Bedrock. Stanley 608 Bedrock. <laughs> Another plow plane. So many fun things. Now these are still fully dipped. You can see all the iron is covered in the uh, wax or no, the rubber. Thoughts on Ward's planes? Are they um, different? They were different companies made them at different times, so it depends on which brand they are. Now here's a couple more routers. There were four of them here this morning, so apparently he sold a couple of them. A couple number 11s. Now here's a you know, 
beam clamp. Some more 150 year anniversary tools. Here we come into more planes here. There's a couple Stanley number 12s, uh, number twos. Compass planes. There's a Liberty Bell. Those are hard to come by. Oh, this I was, man. Uh, okay, this we, we've looked at a couple of these. This is another um, dowling um, so, so, uh, dowel maker. So you can put your stock in here and it turns the dowel and it can go out to the other end. So it can be whatever length you want it. But he has a whole set of cutters. And it's not uncommon for a single cutter to be worth more than the whole tool because the cutters are incredibly rare. Usually you buy the tool and you have one cutter, whatever is still in it. Um, but the individual cutters are incredibly rare and hard to come by. Um, so he was actually going to be selling the tool and all the cutters for, I think, 750 was he was asking, which honestly is not a bad price for all of that. Yeah, most uh, router planes here, you can get one with all the parts in a box for around $120 to $130. Um, there's, I've seen at least two of those here today. Here's a bunch of plain parts, 45 and 55 cutters. Plain parts, lever caps, irons. Ooh. Stanley rule on level number one. Oh, and a no name number one. Nice. They usually, uh, the, the earlier ones didn't have the, the name on the top. More blades, more parts, more parts, more blades. Looking for parts. Ooh. Toothing blade, might have to come back and take a look at that when we're done. Miter saw. Lots more fun here. I'm really looking forward to getting down to the displays here. There's some really interesting things I want to show off. So we're almost done with the tables here. The Veritas scrub plane. <laughs> Lee Nielsen spoke shave. Triangular looking plane under the parts you were looking at. Just the triangular plane under the parts we're looking at. We'll go back and take, see if I can see. Um, I don't know. What is this? 141 body. Ah, okay, okay. So it's it's just missing the handle and the rest of the things. It's basically a uh, uh, combination plane, but just the the main body. So it's a part. There's your answer. Thanks. James, can you show the plane I ask? Um, I won't be doing an overview this this one. I do um, the overview on the spring. So if you want to see a video on that, I have several. Well, this is one I was thinking about getting. So you've got the, the bowl ads on this end and the hatchet on the other end. This is a nice bowl ads I was looking at too. Needs a lot of work to restore. Stanley 50 in nice shape. If you're just looking for a plow plane, you can usually find 50s at a very good price. So like 90% of the work I'm gonna do with a 45 or a 55, I can do the exact same thing with a Stanley 50. So if you can find a Stanley 50, you can usually get a, a far better price on one of those than a 45 or 55. Big old joiner. Another toothing plane. Shoulder plane. More measures. That sounds like a good place price for a uh, Ward's 45. Um, if it's in good condition and functional, I would say I would say buy it. That's it's um, slightly better than reasonable price. 
So here's some prints. They yours? Hey! Hi, how's it going, James? Not too bad. Here's the artist. Hey, YouTubers. <laughs> oh, got a focus. supporter. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> These are pretty. Simple and clean. I like it. Yep. We have to come back and take a look through them. Okay, let's go over here and do some of the displays. So here is the the overview of the facility. But we have all of these displays down this table, and I want to show you a few of them. Uh, there are a couple with uh, leather working that are really kind of interesting. Um, oh, this one here is incredibly beautiful. I mean, take a look at here. I'll show you these. This is a jointer plane. People just don't make things like that anymore. This one, one plane goes one way, one iron goes one way, and the other iron goes the other way. So you can push it both ways. And those are actually gorgeous. They're from the, uh, the 17th and 18th century. Focus. Some of these things are just beautiful. Oh, and I'm looking forward to showing you this over here. I'll give you a sneak peek. That is beyond incredibly cool. All right, so here we have some uh, pattern planes. Um, so these are, wow, that blue is completely destroying my focus color. <laughs> Uh, so these are all, so you'd have your, your main plane body here, and you see it has the, the groove on the end, and then these all have a matching tongue that fits into that groove, and a matching iron. So each one of these have a different radius. So you take one of these, and you would make your hollow, and then you'd make your hollow and make your round, so you'd have a matching pair. But these are the master planes that then make the, the rest of it. Here's some more leather working tools. Yeah, all of that carving on those planes is, is one of the, the interesting things because at a point, it was actually cheaper to have a surface carved than it was to paint it because paint was expensive. Um, oh, this is an interesting one. You have, this is the, the shape of a normal reaping hook. It's about that, it's a much broader hook. But then, horizontal. Uh, drew this, and it was interesting, it was reshaped, and so it's not a very common shape. But then found this one as the, um, this is what was used to make the picture. So it's kind of an interesting piece. Oh, this one's cool. This is a carriage maker's um, plow plane. So it looks kind of like a plow plane, except for it's shorter than a normal plow plane. But you come down here, and the actual ski, the, the, the sole, is very little. Sorry, trying to keep this still so you can actually focus on it. And that, that tiny space in there, come on, focus on me. There we go. That allows you to actually go around corners. So this could do a rounded groove around a corner. Kind of an interesting tool. And some of these would actually have You'd have another plate that would go in front and back, so when you didn't need it to go around a corner, you could put that in and make it a little larger. I actually saw one of those yesterday as well. A collection of <laughs> marking gauges, as scarce as hen's teeth. <laughs> Any lock picks? Um, actually, I think I saw one back there with some lock picks. Let's see, what do we got around over here? I'm trying to remember what this one is. Oh, what is it? These are a bunch of um, tools that are just made for specific purposes. So, what is that tool made for? Oh, these are interesting. They are Stanley advertisements through the years. And these are actually film strips that were made for shop classes. So you could show a film about how to do something. 
Uh, so this is early YouTube. <laughs> the the how-to of woodworking that you could show in shop classes. But, I mean, clickbait started even back then. Read this before. <laughs> or how-to hints. <laughs> Some of these titles are, are just like, uh, they're, they're, they remind me of YouTube video titles. Uh, but some of these are really, really interesting. So you can see how the book actually changes through time uh, of how to work with tools and wood and uh, slowly changes over time. Really kind of interesting. These um, are farming squares. Oops, sorry, out of focus, there we go. Farming squares, a, a really interesting study, which I'd like to, to show more, but I don't have that much time. Okay, this is... Um, Ohio Tool Company type number ones, or type ones, not number ones. Um, so the, the first version of all of these for the Ohio Tool Company. And it goes through little differences in how to identify type ones all the way across, which is really kind of interesting. Uh, back here behind us, these are all of the items that are for sale in the auction tonight. And there's actually quite a few interesting things down there. Um, oh, here. This is the Stanley 45 through the ages. So we start up here with a, a Type 2 Stanley 45. Um, there is no Type 1 Stanley 45. And they continue on down um, through all of them. So you have the, the, the Type 7, the Type 7B, the, the Type 8, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, the 18 is almost unheard of. <laughs> 19, the Type 20. And so it's kind of interesting to see how it was changed throughout the years, how uh, the Stanley 45 adapted. Uh, really, really interesting study here. Oh, here are very rare specialty Stanley tools. Yeah, it's a pattern maker. Ooh, sorry about that. For some reason, I uh, lost connectivity. So here we are again. These are some of the rare uh, Stanley specialty tools. Like this one is actually for expanding lead pipe. So you can put it in there to expand the pipe size. Um, some of these, like the, 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 the smoking set, incredibly rare. Um, but these gardening tools, um, a lot of these were actually made during the Great Depression, and Stanley made a, a point of trying to keep their workers in business. So they kept making these tools through the Depression, and they made them very, very cheaply so that they could, they could get them out, they could sell them at a cheap price, because most of them are just pressed metal. But they could keep their workers working to produce them. So some of these are just incredibly rare. Oh, here, this is uh, absolutely incredible. This whole thing is made of ebony and ivory. You won't find another one. This is um, absolutely priceless. Uh, it's a, a center wheel plow plane, Sandusky number 143. You, you will never see one of these again. And most estimates that this is worth easily 50,000 or more. Um, there, are, there are houses that are worth less than this tool. So, hey, yes. Sorry, the autofocus on this is, is not always the best. Here's another mobile play tool. Some uh, shoe workers pliers. And these are always interesting because they, 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 they hammer on it so you can hold the tack, put it in place, and then pound it down in. But they have all sorts of different functions and tool capacities. Interesting way to dig through these. And most of these displays have you know, descriptions about what you're looking at. It's a lot of fun to come and read through these. Oh, we over here, the What's It table. Um, tomorrow there's a whole session about what is this tool? And we actually kind of talk through them and see if anyone has any ideas or thoughts about what was that tool made for? Can you show the rare Stanley table again? The video feed was choppy after recording. The Oh, okay, let me come back here. Sorry. Here are the, uh, the rare tools. So here's the, the um, lead pipe spreader, the smoking kit. 
and uh, all of these are gardening tools that they made during the de the depression. They're very very cheap. They're just they're just stamped metal, made very very cheaply so that they could sell them very very cheaply during the depression. Um, but they could still keep their workers in business. And so Stanley made a point of, of keeping the workers working even through the Depression. It wasn't easy, but they did some amazing things. Yes, the uh, card table attachment to hold, uh, so you, you could clamp this onto the corner of a card table and you could put your drinks on this. This is incredibly rare. Um, one of these, these dumb things, it's just a folded piece of metal with this screw on the back, so you could clamp it onto a table and have your drinks off the corner of the table. Incredibly rare and almost pointless, but worth a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, for some reason I lost connection and I had to uh, go back through it. But let me show this again because this is, this is one of those once in a lifetime things. Apparently, there are three of these known to exist. And the camera just isn't showing the deep quality of this thing. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, someone was saying that it wouldn't surprise them if this went for six figures. So. So I think that is about it for this show. Now that we've gone all the way around and you see everything that we've had a chance to, to go through here. This is a fun one. This was probably one of my favorites so far. There have been more tools for sale here than... Um, than most of the national meets. But this is this is fairly common for most national meets to have a, a room about this size. The local ones are usually about half this size. Some of the bigger ones might be three quarters this size. Um, so if you can find those around you, the local ones are usually held every year wherever they're at. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would, I would love to make one of those plow planes. The only problem is I can't find that much ebony um, and I can't make it out of ivory anymore. Although I could use imitation ivory. Um, that's, those would be, uh, yeah, re a lot. So I'd love to hear your, uh, your thoughts on this. If you did like it, please let me know. Um, and I'm, uh, the next national meet is going to be in Green Bay, Wisconsin, which I'm actually going to be doing a talk at that. That will be in June. So make plans now, come out to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, you do have to be a member to come to these. The membership's like $20, $25 a year, something like that. It's, it's pretty, pretty good. Um, and then you have to pay the convention fee when you come. But uh, then you get to go to the parking lot sale as well as the indoor sale on Friday and on Saturday. So I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you there. And I will be doing a talk on Thursday um, at Green Bay. So I'll actually be hopefully bringing up my bench and showing some of the tools and how things go. Um, I would love to show you tools that are out in my car, though, so it's a little bit far away. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be putting a picture up on Instagram of the tools that I purchased. I didn't purchase that many because um, I'm not really looking for a lot of tools. Uh, There's a nice $25. Yeah, uh, so it's about $25 a year, $26 if you if you pay. And with, the, with that $25 a year, you also get the grist mill four times a year. Uh, which has a lot of great information in it. You also get a publication uh, at least once a year, and sometimes they do it twice a year. And the publication is usually a republication of one of the catalogs uh, with incredible amount of information in those. Um, there's a bunch of other things you get with the membership, and it is, it is well, well worth it. And if you are not, um, there are other collecting organizations very similar to this around the world. If you want to find those, go to handtoolfinder.com, and I have a whole listing of all the collecting organizations, as well as every known place I know of to buy hand tools. So I think that's about it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. Now let's find, where's that button again? Somewhere around here. Uh, da -da 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 there's that and that.